I felt worse than ever. Unhappy, lost his mind. There were days when I lay in bed with the curtains drawn. Morning turned into evening, and again morning came, and I just lay there and did not want to deal with anyone. Don't deal with thoughts. With illness. With heartache. Not having to deal with the fact that my company is going down. Not having feelings with life. I have reached a tipping point. Couldn't bear it anymore. I've had enough. Enough of this misery, this pain, this melancholy, this me. It got me, that's enough. 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 And in this despair, I crawled out of bed, staggering, went to the table, opened my notebook and wrote, from this day on I promise to love myself, treat myself as if I love someone sincerely and deeply, in my thoughts, actions, choices that I do, the experience that I get. Every moment when I am conscious, I make a decision, I love myself. There was nothing more to say. How long did I have to write all this? Probably less than a minute. But the tension was as if I had carved the words through the paper on the table. I seemed disgusting to myself, I could love others, but myself. From now on, I focused only on this thought. I didn't know how to love myself. All I understood was that I had made a vow, and it was much more than a desire or an aspiration, than an I want or good to have. Vow. I had to go all in or fail trying to do it. There was no middle ground. There, in my bedroom, in the dark, I decided to love myself. Outside, the city rumbled indifferently having no idea of the decision I had made. How I did it was the easiest thing I could think of. And importantly, it worked no matter how bad I felt. I started to say, I love myself. This thought I repeated over and over again, at first only lying in bed. Of course, the mind could wander, slip away, but every time I noticed this, I returned to the repetition, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. First in bed, then in the shower, then being online, then after talking with someone I continued to mentally say, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. It became an anchor, the only true thing. Then I began to add something to this phrase that could work. If it worked out, then he left the thought. If not, he threw it away. Before I really knew what I was doing, I created a simple practice that took self-love to a whole new level. I went for broke. There was no refund. I started to feel better. My body began to heal faster. And the state of mind returned to normal and something that I never expected and could not imagine, life has become better. Things began to happen to me that were almost beyond the reach of my mind, things that I could not even dream of. As if life had said, finally, you are an idiot. Now let me show you that you made the right decision. People came into my life, opportunities appeared, I caught myself thinking that I was using the word magic to describe what was happening. And all this time I kept repeating to myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. I continued to practice. In less than a month, I recovered, was in shape again, smiled and felt happy. To be honest, at the very beginning I did not believe in the words, which I kept repeating in my mind. How many of us love ourselves? But then it didn't matter what I believed in. What was really important was to focus on one thought over and over again until it constantly occupies my mind. Just imagine. 
Imagine the feeling when you notice in passing that you love yourself effortlessly. It's like catching the sunset out of the corner of your eye. It is sobering, it makes you feel the taste of life again. Why love? Why not I like myself? Uh, I accept myself. Why, well, why is it necessary to love? Here's my theory, when you were a child, you experienced love. The mind knows it at a fundamental level. So, unlike most words, love has the ability to slip past consciousness into the subconscious, where the magic happens. What if you don't believe you love yourself? It does not matter. Your role is to pave the way, stone by stone, and strengthen the connections between neurons. The mind already has strong bonds for love. The body knows it too. It knows that love nourishes, that love is tender, that love accepts. It knows that love heals. Your task is to love yourself without confusion. Sincerely and deeply. Feel it. Again and again. Make it the only focus of your mind. The mind and body will respond automatically. They will have no choice. As you love yourself, life loves you in return. I think she has no choice either. I cannot explain how it works, but I am convinced that it is true. When you realize that you are using the word magic to describe your life, you will guess what I mean. Practice. I tried to figure out exactly what I did and how it affected me and my life. I also wondered how anyone could do that. And I realized that practicing self-love boils down to four things. 1. Mental cycle. 2. Meditation. 3. Mirror. 4. One question. This is the beauty of this technique. It's simple, practical, and the results are far more impressive than you might imagine. After all, if you loved yourself sincerely and deeply, would you limit your life to what you previously thought was possible? No. You would shock yourself. There is one unwavering requirement, a fierce desire to love yourself. This, I'm afraid, cannot be missed. Faith doesn't matter. The practice works in such a way that the mind can function. He has no choice but to adapt and react. Just stay open to the opportunity to love yourself. The rest is easy. Window. Darkness is the absence of light. If you remember this, this thought will change your life. How changed mine? It is on this concept that my practice is based. Any negative thought is darkness. How do you clean it? Are you struggling with fear or anxiety? Do you repulse a numb sorrow and pain? Notice that these methods don't work. Instead, Imagine that you are in a dark room and it is light outside. Your task is to go to the window, take a rag and start washing it. Just clean up. And pretty soon the light will come in naturally, chasing away the darkness. So simple. Every time the mind switches to darkness, fear, anxiety, pain, substitute yours. When you notice it, wash the window and the light will pour inside. 1. Mental Cycle I am sitting at my desk. San Francisco at night sparkles in the large bedroom windows. The Coca-Cola sign blinks and then, letter by letter, goes out and lights up again. I see cars on Market Street, their red brake lights. 
A famous tower above Twin Peaks is swallowed up at night, obscured by fog. If you opened my head now and looked inside, you would ask in disappointment, does this guy have no imagination? After all, only one thought rushes through my head, I love myself. I love me. I love me. For many days from the moment I took the vow, this has been my only concentration. Sometimes in a whisper, sometimes silently. When I brush my teeth muttering. It's loud in the shower. Do not stop. I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. I have nothing to lose. That is all I have. I love myself, I love myself, I don't care about everything else, I love myself. One day I heard a curious thought, we, as human beings, think what we think. Not true. We remember most of the time. We relive what has already happened. We scroll through familiar patterns and cycles in our head. For happiness, for procrastination, for sadness. Fears, hopes, dreams, desires. We have loops for everything. We keep playing them, and they, in turn, become the trigger for the senses. It happens so automatically that we think we have no choice. But this is not true. Imagine a mental cycle in this way, a deep footprint, a rut formed because this path is used very often. A crevice in a rock washed out by water. Enough time, enough rain, and you have a river. If some thought flashed rapidly in your brain, then it has no power over you. Repeat it over and over, especially with emotional intensity, feel it, and over time you will create furrows, a mental river. And then she will begin to control you. And that's why focusing on the mental cycle is the solution. Take this one thought, I love myself. Add emotional intensity because it will deepen the furrow faster than anything else. Feel the message. Repeat it over and over. Focus on it and make it your truth. Our goal is to create a furrow deeper than the one that has already been laid over the years. The one that creates disheartening feelings. She also needed time. We have had some of these attitudes since childhood. This is why this action requires focused dedication. This is why we have to practice constantly. Forget about the destructive furrows of the past. What you are creating is a new track, so deep, so powerful that your thoughts will automatically flow along it. It will take time, of course. It took me a month to move from mystery to magic. But you will notice incredible changes. Expect them. There will be more and more of them. And one day you will go out into the street, bathed in sunlight, and you will feel great, love life, and she will love you in return. You will stop and realize that this is now your natural state. Can you imagine a better way to live? To Meditation Even if you are not going to do anything else, please do one thing. It will make a difference. I meditate for seven minutes every day. Why seven? The melody to which I meditate, which calms and relaxes, piano and flute, lasts seven minutes. I sit with my back against the wall, put on my headphones, listen to music and imagine galaxies, stars and the universe. And I imagine how all the light from space flows into my head and lower into my body, heading where it needs to be. I breathe slowly, naturally. As I breathe in, I think I love myself. And as I exhale, I release the response of the mind and body, whether it is there or not. That's all. Simply. Inhale. 
I love myself. Exhale. Let go of the sensation that appears. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Naturally. The music flows. The mind wanders, that is its nature. Every time it happens, I just go back to breathing. When I inhale, I switch to, I love myself. When I exhale, I release everything in my mind and body. From time to time, I focus on the light pouring down from above. Sometimes I do this every time I inhale. Before I know it, the seven minutes pass and the meditation ends. There is something special about this, that light enters my head from galaxies and stars. The concept of light itself. As with love, the subconscious has positive associations with light. Plants stretch towards the sun. As human beings, we crave light. We find sunrises, sunsets and a bright moon beautiful and soothing. Again, there is no need to consciously create healing or anything positive. The subconscious mind will take care of this. All I have to do is give him an image, in this case light, and offer a thought, in this case, love myself. It will do the rest. This is a strenuous practice because it requires concentration. But does it feel like that? No, actually, she's pretty peaceful. I think this is the real emotional tension that creates peace, love and inner growth. Instructions Step 1. Turn on the music. Something soothing, gentle, preferably instrumental. A snippet that makes you feel good. Step 2. Sit with your back against a wall or window. Cross your legs, or stretch them out, choose a position that will be more natural for you. Step 3. Close your eyes. Smile slowly. Imagine a ray of light pouring into your head from above. Step 4. Inhale and mentally say, I love myself. Slow. Be careful with yourself. Step 5. Exhale and release whatever arises with the exhalation. Any thoughts, emotions, states, memories, fears, hopes, desires. Breathe it out. No judgment, no attachment to anything. Be kind to yourself. Step 6. Repeat steps 4 and 5 until the music ends. When your attention wanders, notice it and smile. Smile at him as if he were a child acting like a child. And with that smile, return to your breath. Step 7. When the music is over, slowly open your eyes. Smile. Do it from the inside out. This is your time. Only yours. Why music? Because I listen to the same passage every time, and now it acts as an anchor, easily pulling me into a meditative state. Crutch, maybe, but good. Do this meditation constantly. You will notice magic knocking into your life. 3. Mirror But this I am a little afraid to share. People will decide what is wrong with my head. But I'll take a chance, because this is a very powerful exercise. Step 1. Set a timer for 5 minutes. Step 2. Stand in front of the mirror so that your nose is a few inches away from it. Relax. Breathe. Step 3. Look yourself in the eye. Sometimes it helps to focus on only one eye. Choose any. Breathe slowly, naturally, until you develop a rhythm. Step 4. Looking into your eyes, say, I love myself. 
Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you say it while looking at your eyes. Step 5. Repeat the words of love gently, stopping from time to time to look yourself in the eye. When 5 minutes are up, smile. You just told yourself the truth in a deep, intuitive way. In a way that the mind cannot escape. If someone looked into your eyes, knowing that you love him, then he saw just that. Give yourself the same gift. 4. One question. It is easy to say, I love myself, when you are locked in an apartment and recovering from an illness. More difficult, after returning to the land of the living, interacting with people who have their own problems and mental cycles. And dealing with others and responding to their negative emotions with my own, I found myself asking myself this question. If I loved myself sincerely and deeply, would I allow myself to experience this? The answer has always been no. It worked. Since I was working on a mental loop, the step after the negative was clear. Instead of dealing with the emotion or trying not to feel it, I just returned to the one true thing in my head, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. This question is deceptively simple in its power. It moves your attention from where you are, whether it be anger, pain or fear, any form of darkness, to where you want to be. And to love. Your mind and life have no choice but to follow. Think. If we are made up of molecules and atoms, and they, in turn, are made up of smaller particles, which are empty space and energy, then who are we? Are we our thoughts? Have you ever found your mind in a mental loop replaying some old story, old pain, the same pattern? Who you are? Thought or thought observer? If you are an observer, then what is thought? Are you a thought observing another thought? Perhaps we are just biochemical storms inside synaptic connections in a brain that has evolved over millions of years. Or maybe there is an observer, a deeper self. In any case, there is no evidence. I am quite happy that I don't know the answer. I like to think about it, but mainly to remind myself, in the end, everything is theory. I care about what works. What works magic in my life? I know one thing. The mind, left to itself, repeats the same stories, the same cycles. Mostly those that are not useful. Thus, it is more efficient to consciously choose a thought. Then practice it over and over again. With emotions, with feelings, with acceptance. Lay synaptic pathways until the mind starts to reproduce them automatically. Do this with sufficient frequency over time, and the mind will have no choice. Where do you think your current cycles come from? The goal is to practice until the thought you choose becomes the primary cycle. The filter through which you look at life. Sounds like work. Maybe. But the nature of the mind is thought. Choose the one that will transform you, make your life brighter. The one I chose myself, I love myself, is the strongest I know. You may find others. Anyway, please do it. It's worth it. Memory. Memory is not set in stone. Any neuroscientist will tell you this. The more often you remember something, especially if the thinking is emotionally charged, the more you strengthen the pathways that connect neurons. Simply put, the more you think about something and the more you worry about it, the more the memory affects your life. And here's what's interesting. It is not just an act of remembering that strengthens memory. The very state of consciousness at this moment plays a huge role. 
its consequences will transform everything around. Here's a thought experiment. When you're feeling bad, try to consciously remember a relationship that ended years ago. You will find yourself focusing on the negative things, and they seem to be increasing. Conversely, do the same experience, but remember the failed connection while being happy. Did you notice the difference? It is still the same experience, the same mind. But the filter is different. And it shifts focus, which in turn subtly alters memory. More importantly, it helps you see how your memory makes you feel at that particular moment. You can reduce the power she has over you. If a painful memory arises, don't fight it or try to push it away, you are in quicksand. Fighting makes the pain worse. Go to love instead. Self-love. Feel it. If you have to pretend first, that's okay. Over time, this will become a reality. Feel love for yourself when your memory wants to take the present moment away from you. This will take away her power. And it will change the connections in memory. Do this over and over. Love. Remaking memory. Love. Remaking memory. This is your mind. He is plastic and you can do whatever you want with him.